Hi guys, it's a new video and Mia is here saying hi. This is gonna be a unit build video and it's gonna be about the guy that you can see on your screen. Um, Brave Ike is a somewhat boring unit, however in lots of cases I have people asking me or asking around uh, what tank should I build? Is this unit viable? Is this new unit a uh, viable tank? In most cases they might be, however can they do what Brave Ike does as well as Brave Ike? I'm sorry, my cat wants to be in front of the camera. Um, Brave Ike, let's put it this way, Brave Ike is a tier 0 unit. He is S tier in Aether Raids. Nobody else can do what, he's, what he does as well as him. Um, Brave Ike has this unique effect in his weapon where he's got a percentage damage reduction and that is something that no other units really share. Now, um, I'm gonna show you the progression that you should be going for with your Brave Ike. Uh, Brave Ike is a unit that can be summoned fairly often compared to what you would consider his limited availability. Um, he is no longer in the permanent summoning pool, however, he comes in twice in the weekly uh, revival banners. And as far as we can tell, those are gonna be running um, for a while, hopefully for long. Um, uh, he comes in twice and he is never sharing color. And in one of those banners, he is sharing colors with his most faithful partner, Brave Lucina. We will get to her eventually. Now, everybody starts off with a Brave Ike, such as the, well, that you can build like the one that I'm showing you will give him summoner support and you will need a Brave Lucina to partner up with him. He will work without her, but there is no reason to run him without her. If you don't have a Brave Lucina and you're using another tank, you should put off building your Brave Ike until you have one Brave Lucina to partner with him. At this point, I will take uh, for granted that you have a Brave Lucina that you have fully summoner supported your Brave Ike and that you have LA supported him with Lucina. And I have cat ears on my face. Um, first of all, Brave Ike has an issue. Well, not so bad of an issue. Well, he gets doubled because of his weapon. His weapon makes it so that the enemy will double uh, Brave Ike before Brave Ike can attack. Um, is this good? No. Is this bad? Nah, not really. We can work with it. With special acceleration, since Brave Ike comes with a slaying effect, he will be able to proc Aether every round of combat. Because his cooldown starts at 4, he will get hit down to 2, he will get hit down to 0, and then retaliate with, a, with an Aether, which is a very powerful special. Very few units can use Aether effectively in Aether raids and Brave Ike is luckily one of them. He will need Distant Counter to have effectiveness in both phases, especially since the most threatening uh, units that you will find in Aether Raids are going to be um, uh, ranged. Uh, generally, they're gonna be magical, some of them are gonna be physical, however, uh, resistance is something that you might need to patch up. Now, uh, all those stats that I've, uh, that I've showcased are going to be in light season with both a peony and an air. Um, this is not the most optional, optimal setup for all Brave Ike setups. However, um, if by this point you should have, a free, well, you will have a free air and a free peony. And I will yell at you if you fight me in light season without <laughs> without two bonus units because you should have them. Um, it's generally the correct choice to merge your airs and your peony because of uh, the scoring that they will give you. Um, uh, it, you can in some cases run double air or the uh, double peony not as much, uh, but you could even run a triple mythic setup. Um, I haven't considered this, this is one of the variables that is up to you, it's not super special, and um, the partner that you want for Brave Ike is Brave Lucina, no matter what. So, 
Uh, let's talk about specials. Quick Repost will allow you to attack twice, it will proc Ether more, uh, more consistently, and since you have percentage-based damage reduction, HP resistance is the seal that will give you the most bang for your buck, especially early on, because your stats, your stats are going to be lower, and the amount of the, that the HP res seal increases your HP and resistance is going to be high enough that you will... Um, uh, that you will gain the most benefit from that seal's comp that seal compared to everything else. Next up, the first upgrade, the first thing that you should look for in your brave bike. Uh, of course, the two dragon flowers are uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory. They give they give them one point of HP, and one point of attack, and the first merge with an attack um, with an attack nature will give him an attack bonus. Um, don't worry too much about super boons and stuff like that. Don't worry too much about it. Just remember that you get one brave bike for free from your um, from your hero's path. I think that's what it's called. The tutorial mode that they implemented and abandoned <laughs> that one. Uh, the build is gonna be the same early on. You're just I'm just showing you that you're gonna have some stat differences. So we go from 55 attack to 59, and we go from 66 HP to 67. That already puts you above most, uh, pretty much all buildings such as um, Panic Manor and, uh, well, Panic Manor for the most part. The problem are gonna be the shrines because your stats are just so high. Brave heroes got uh, were one of the first heroes that got a a base stat increase. So uh, you've got your brave like going. You're gonna start getting some merges. Now it's time to switch your build up a little. People are talking about null kind of disrupt as a go-to skill on brave Ike. It's very good. It's simply very good on him. You uh, uh, you're not gonna need a specific D skill. Quick repost can be run in the seal slot especially once you start getting some stats. Um, I put this Brave Ike at five Dragonflowers because then he will get a resistance point. He gets resistance points at five and 10 Dragonflowers respectively. So those are what you're gonna keep in mind for an attack build. And this is your middle of the pack Brave Ike build. This Brave Ike will be very solid. He will be able to tank any healer in the current meta game or any healer in the game uh, in reality as long as you're able to keep your Lucina within range of him. Um, quick Repost moves to the seal slot uh, just so that you can attack twice. This will allow your Aether to proc more reliably also. Um, next up we have a different build. This build starts working towards your speed. Speed is something that you want to concentrate once your brave Ike is uh, is starting to get going. You might within the first five brave Ikes that you summon, you might get one with plus speed. So uh, if you're if you want to do more with your brave Ike, if you run into some matchups where he's just not enough, the speed build is where you'll want to go. Swift stance becomes your seal of choice. You want to invest in speed um, because you're not gonna get doubled as much. Soul is what you want to move to so that you can, uh, it's gonna be a two cooldown special so you can hit it much more reliably. Um, and yeah, this is what you want to, this is an intermediate step. Um, because next up, this is what you'll wanna do. You will replace your null, con your null content disrupt with null follow up. And this will mean that the second guaranteed hit that you were taking from your van, you're no longer taking. So you're taking one hit, which is reduced by 40%. And from that point on, you will be doubling your opponents because you have 41 speed, plus four from the Swift and Seal, plus up to nine from Brave Lucina. And you've got the speed stack going. Um, Soul is the beginner cooldown, uh, the beginner special that you can run and you will be able to move to Ether later on. Uh, you can actually start running Ether uh, at this level of merges. There's not too much going against it, to be fair. Uh, and it's the build that, I'm that I've am that i used for the longest time. 
uh, one thing to consider why do you why are you asking me why would you remove the second hit that you're taking if it's being reduced by 80 percent well the reason is uh, this is counted as a an attack order altering skill your van that is the your van refine um, that means that skills such as hardy bearing and that includes the includes the hardy bearing seal along with um, new year's Micaiah's, uh weapon along with all the mayugi daggers uh, they will be ignoring that damage reduction. So you will take a first hit and then your second hit won't be reduced either. Uh, its damage won't be re reduced either. So you're granting your opponents to double you as long as they've got hardy bearing. So those could be a serious threat to you. Uh, the speed build with no follow-up aims to counter this. Of course, if your opponent has more speed than you, Null follow-ups, null follow-ups effect won't apply. This is why you want to have more speed than your opponents. Um, there was another thing that I wanted to say, but it's escaping me right now. Uh, let's move on to the next build, and let's see if it comes to me. So this is just switching to ether and filling up your dragon flowers. Um, at four dragon flowers, you will get a point of speed. At five, you will get a point of resistance, and the same is true. The next five dragon flowers. At nine dragon flowers, you will get a point of speed, and at ten, you will get a point in resistance. Trust me, you will not regret these dragon flowers. Um, next up, what you want to do is switch things a little bit. This is a fully built brave bike. He is plus ten, plus ten. And the final tool in his arsenal is Pulse Smoke. Why Pulse Smoke? Well, not only does it let does it let you counter all infantry pulse teams as long as you're hitting them. You don't even need to be hitting them first. You just need to hit the first unit that's attacking you. And usually the splash the splash from Pulse Smoke will remove their specials. But if you're facing a more different difficult unit you can smite your brave like into danger spread the pulse smoke not get uh, not get hit by a bunch of specials you may keep your peony in the same lane or column as your brave like to get the bonus stats from peony's weapon and your build will be working just as well if not even much better and pulse smoke also counters post combat specials such as gale force um, this is this can be very good if you're facing a cav lunge user such as brave roy or og Aliwood, who will attempt to displace your brave bike uh, they will do it as long as they survive combat and they will go into your team and they will be often able to wreak havoc generally you will want to keep your uh, lucina two spaces away from brave bike sometimes you can keep them uh, you will need to keep them uh, adjacent to one another this is better against lunge calves this way you will be able to lock the lunge calf between your brave bike and your lucina uh, lunge calves are usually red the ones that survive brave bike are and so uh, lucina will be able to deal with them against range nukers if they're gonna survive your brave bike and they are and your brave bike is adjacent to lucina that nuker will usually bait a wings of mercy from the dancer the nuker will get danced and they will move one space further towards you and snipe your lucina so um those are the play patterns that you need to keep into consideration now the final build that i haven't personally gone to however it is an option and some people at super high uh, AR use this, simply switches um, null follow-up away for repel. Uh, repel is another source of percentage-based uh, damage reduction. And repel also affects the AOE component of AOE skills. So there are some cases where Brave Light will be vulnerable uh, under those uh, points uh, under those circumstances and repel will help you um, will help you get some flat damage reduction uh, now uh, here's the thing 
repel just like close call they're functionally the same skill when it comes to damage reduction they will reduce the damage that you take from aoe's and damage from combat damage by up to 40 percent this goes uh, this is um, basically how many points of speed you have more than your opponent those will be multiplied by four this means that you want to be at 10 points of speed above your attacker but if you go above that mark if you go above that distance uh, the extra speed will be wasted so some people will be running swift stance other people have chosen to go with phantom speed because phantom speed won't give you actual speed but for the calculation of repel or close call you will count as if you had 10 more speed now let's look at lucina there are two main builds for lucina here they are here's the first one um there uh, basically you either want to go speed or you want to go res and distant guard distant guard is always good because the main threats that you're going to be facing are ranged um however as a c skill i know it's not budget because it comes from chronia who is a very valuable use unit and it's very good especially early on um so many people won't be looking to sacrifice their distant guard to lucina this first lucina doesn't give any speed to brave ike aside from the three from her weapon but she will give brave ike plus three resistance from her weapon plus three resistance from her c skill plus four resistance from distant guard and plus six visible resistance from the link skill attack is another viable stat to brave ike um, however, once you want to go for the speed build, once you're going faster, this is what you are going to go for. Distant Guard Seal can be replaced by Drive Speed. In fact, I run double Drive Speed. This will give me plus 9 in combat speed. And I have switched the link to a speed resistance link. Resistance is our most valued defensive stat. Um, and when you want to go speed you will need the speed shove is the preferred preferred movement movement assist because um, well it's really easy to shove brave bike and that will leave you at two spaces away from one another so you're barely in range of your lucina uh, if you want to stick closer to your lucina you will shove your brave bike and then brave bike will move back one square and so he will be within one square of brave lucina um, that's pretty much it really um it's not a complicated combo it's just extremely effective and people really underestimate how effective it can be um i you should check the videos from this week i have tanked uh, brandimons i have tanked um fallen uh, julias of course they weren't at the same level of of investment as my brave ike however you have to consider availability most of the brave ike counters are in very limited um, edition are very limited edition heroes they are seasonals they don't uh, they aren't in the permanent summon pool or they don't get rerun enough they will require some very expensive fodders whereas brave ike is really easy to summon and to build up some people will say that lucina needs to soak for brave ike that your support needs to soak your offensive skills uh in the case of brave ike versus lucina it's gonna be such an expensive investment to build your lucina so that she can soak from your brave ike um let's look at an earlier brave ike this one has uh this one at plus seven already has 58 attack and 41 speed his speed won't be reduced however it won't be reduced by chill speed however it will re be reduced by bright shrine over here we have still a um a one stat differential in favor of brave ike you could put a couple of dragon flower song lucina in order to patch up these differences however as far as your personal uh, game economy goes I would advise against summoning for too many Brave Lucinas. I have one for Light Season, one for Astra Season. 
they're at plus zero I don't plan to invest any mergers on either of them they do their job just fine and I uh, in the case of my Astra season um, tank that I pair up with Bray Lucina that would be young Marth and I have built my Naga to soak for him uh, as Lucina's stat spread is just not optimized enough to soak there unlike someone like a um, male Corin, whose weapon gives him plus two into all sass. Uh, that's it, essentially. Um, uh, I would advise taking a look at my light season replays. Um, I play with Bray Light a lot. He tanks a lot of things. <laughs> uh, and he's just so effective. Uh, Kronia is the other unit that is almost as plug-and-play as Bravite. She's got a couple different builds too, but um, she's in the same category. As far as AR offense goes, those two are the heroes that will easily take you to tier 27 without much to worry about. Alright, so thank you guys for watching this. Um, I might do some gameplay clips I will need to find them out and edit them however uh, this is pretty much uh, this is pretty much it Bray Ike is really good and you should invest in him all right thank you everyone bye bye